It's a quiet day along the Clark Fork River at Missoula's Kelly Island fishing access site. Deep blue-gray squalls carry short-lived snow flurries across the Missoula Valley. The cottonwoods glow deep yellow against the clouds and rustle insistently in the wind. I must look a little bit absurd this afternoon. The occasional bow hunters who pass me barely try to disguise their skeptical glances. I'm wearing waders, a raincoat, and more items of wool and fleece than I care to count. And on top of all of that is my birding gear, binoculars, camera, and a sound recording setup with shotgun microphone and headset. My plan for the afternoon had started out as a simple autumn walk, but it's quickly become an adventure in, well, attempting to record bird sounds. The only problem is that the birds today are few and far between. The sounds I might record are either fleeting or unappealing. A leaf blower emits a piercing whine from a house near the trailhead. Occasionally, I can hear a northern flicker calling in the distance. A common raven flies over, croaking. A second raven slips past. Hi, and welcome to the Wild with Nature podcast. I'm Shane Sater, naturalist and writer. This story, which is originally from November 2nd, 2022, is called Finding Nature Near Missoula, Walking Through Fall at Kelly Island. I updated this story slightly in May 2024 and completely redid this accompanying podcast. In part, this was inspired by Linda Saul, one of my wonderful podcast listeners who has been generously funding me to gradually translate many of my earlier stories to Spanish, including this one. Partly, I wanted to make this update too because the quality of my podcast has improved dramatically in the last year. I'm really happy with my recent narrations, and especially with all of the recordings of nature sounds that I've been incorporating, so I was inspired to update this podcast in English as well. And finally, I got excited to revisit this story, because Kelly Island and its surroundings remain one of my favorite natural areas near Missoula, the city where my mom lives. And my love for this place connects with so many of my recent and future stories. This winter's portraits of migratory songbirds and voices of place along the Huatulco River in southwestern Oaxaca, Mexico, brings in a comparison with a river 2,300 miles away from here. Then there's last fall's portrait of the ecosystem along Nebraska's Niobrara River, with all of its biodiversity. There's also the story I just published in May 2024, which takes place just a few miles away from Kelly Island exploring urban wildlife and weedy species among Missoula's streets and houses. And keep your eyes open for additional stories in the works from the extensive wild area in and around Kelly Island. Nesting pileated woodpeckers, my personal relationship with dogbane, a plant which we get to meet briefly in this story, and perhaps even some adventures with beavers. Meanwhile, I hope you enjoy this story of the beauty of fall at Kelly Island along the Clark Fork River. As always, you can also find this episode in written form on my website, wildwithnature.com, along with lots of photos. Check the show notes for the direct link to that page. And now, let's continue with the story. I'm trudging through the river-rounded cobbles of a side channel of the Clark Fork River. A fly fisherman casts into the pool below me. Last night, the weather turned sharply towards winter. Yesterday was sunny and in the 60s. Today, a 38-degree breeze pushes clouds over the golden cottonwoods. Snow has dusted the mountains where the western larches have turned a deep yellow. It's quite a change from the last time I was here, in August. Now, fall songbird migration is over. The western tanagers, gray catbirds, and Wilson's warblers have passed through already. 
With winter approaching, bird activity is becoming more sporadic. And it's late afternoon, almost the worst time of day for birds to be very visible. I feel clumsy and absurd with all of my sound recording gear. Why the heck am I doing this today? But birds are no birds. It's a beautiful afternoon to walk and notice the changing of the seasons. I continue onwards, wading the side channel just below the gentle arc of a well-maintained beaver dam. Some of the cottonwoods are nearly bare already. The birds remain quiet. Underneath the trees, the invasive smooth brome, a grass that dominates much of the island, is glowing pale green, gold, and umber. In spite of the smooth brome, the vegetation on this island is a rather diverse mix. Along a moist-soiled overflow channel where the deer have walked recently, I pass a sepia patch of tall dogbane. This elegant native plant is covered with delicate white flowers in the summer. In another direction, a few ponderosa pines mix with the cottonwoods. The understory is rusty green with the foliage of Rocky Mountain junipers. I've been stumbling around Kelly Island in my waders for over an hour now, but I still haven't heard a single bird I can record. That's okay, though, because there's always something to learn out here. Even when a field day doesn't go as planned, it's never a waste. A red-tailed hawk circles over the island against the blue-purple clouds. Its rusty tail tells me it's an adult. The hawk taunts my camera and microphone, remaining silent and rapidly fading eastward on the sighing wind. But this hawk carries one of today's stories with it. From the eyes of a red tail, or from the computer assistance of a LiDAR map, you can see that this entire island is a layered braid. It's crisscrossed with old river channels, meandering back and forth, stacked one atop the next. Here, near the confluence of the Bitterroot and Clark Fork rivers, every aspect of this place has been shaped by water. The patterns of smooth brome and dogbane, cottonwood and pine, the whole seasonal progression of birds that appear here throughout the year, the white-tailed deer that just flushed from their grassy beds moments ago, all of it is a tapestry woven by water. I first arrived in Missoula two days ago, and I'll be writing here through the end of 2022. And already, the force of water is informing my time here. Yesterday, I joined the Watershed Education Network in a survey of the Rattlesnake Creek Dam site, a look at the power and changeability of water. Over the next two months, I'll also be getting out in the field with birders and naturalists, celebrating the changing seasons. And most likely, I'll be making some more visits to Kelly Island. The sun is sliding behind the cloud bank that looms over the western mountains. Finally, I start to hear some birds. A few pygmy nuthatches twitter from the ponderosas, too fleetingly to record them. A hairy woodpecker calls emphatically, just one time. And then, a great horned owl flushes from the cottonwood above me, sailing silently to a nearby pine. The flight of the owl unleashes a series of timid sip-sip calls from two black-capped chickadees. They remain still for several minutes, hunkered down in a common barberry that's turning orange and scarlet with the fall. The chickadees, at least, I'm able to record. I capture their sip calls and watch as they begin to forage again, cautiously. It wasn't totally foolish to carry all of this equipment with me, after all. A walk in nature is always a foray into the unknown. Some afternoons, like this one, the birds are quiet. But whether we find what we're hoping to find or not, there are always stories waiting for us. 
Today, it's been the last orange fall leaves against a stormy sky. It's been the braided patterns of water and vegetation as seen from a red-tailed hawk's vantage. And it's been the chickadees that I lugged my microphone out here to record. So get outside and let me know about the stories you find. Maybe I'll see you out there. Thanks for listening. This story, like all of my work, was possible only because of the generous support of listeners like you. Once again, you can find it in written form on my website, wildwithnature.com, along with lots of photos. I'm really fortunate to have a community of listeners and readers who support this storytelling work in so many ways, from sharing these stories with friends and family to those generous supporters who make monthly or one-time contributions to support this work. To see an acknowledgement of those generous supporters and to find out how you can help support this project, go to my website, again it's wildwithnature.com, and go to the donate page. Thank you. Until next time, get outside. And while you're out there, take a minute to think about the waters. All of the life that lives along our rivers, wherever we are. From the cottonwoods, red-tailed hawks and chickadees of Kelly Island. To the coyotes and eastern screech owls of Nebraska's Niobrara River. To the happy wrens, orange-fronted parakeets, social flycatchers, and cinnamon-bellied saltators of Oaxaca's Huatulco River and beyond. If you'd like, let me know what you find.